Ready to declare the results. 5,150. Five, 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 the elected to serve in the United Kingdom Parliament. Election night 2010. Fantastic. Look how excited everybody is. And look how excited I am. Who knew politics could make me feel like this? How did I, a comedian who normally doesn't trust anyone wearing a suit, suddenly get so interested in politics? Basically, they rang me up and said, do you know much about politicians? And I said, not really. And they said, perfect, you're the man for the job. So I'm on a mission to find out all about politicians. First of all, what is a politician? And second of all, how do you get to be one? This is Reading West, one of the 650 constituencies that make up the political map of the UK. Each constituency is represented by one member of parliament. Thousands of people in each constituency have registered to vote. And in a few weeks' time, they'll get the chance to do just that. Because, fanfare please, it's a general election! On May the 6th, the voters of Reading West will be... I got distracted by a bee. On May the 6th, the voters of Reading West will be choosing the person they want to represent them in Parliament, their MP. But that's not all they'll be doing. Most MPs belong to a political party, each with a different view on how to run the country. In a general election, it's usually the party with the most MPs that gets to form the next government. So by voting, you not only choose your MP, you also have your say about which party you want in power for the next few years. In Reading West, there are six people who want to be the next MP, each from a different political party. And the candidates in alphabetical order are... Daisy Benson from the Liberal Democrats. Bruce Hay from the UK Independence Party, or UKIP for short. Naz Sarkar from the Labour Party. Alok Sharma from the Conservative Party, sometimes also known as the Tories. Howard Thomas from the Common Sense Party. And Adrian Windisch from the Green Party. It's a pretty exciting election for Reading West because none of these candidates has ever been an MP before. So if they want to get their message across to the people, it's going to be an uphill struggle. <laughs> but enough from me. Let's hear what the candidates have to say for themselves. Microphone, please. Thank you. Does one vote really make a difference? Well, sadly, it's not even the case that people vote once. Most people don't vote. So, yes, that's a huge issue. And if everyone did vote, particularly young people, that their voice would be listened to. It's important to have your say. And if you don't have your say, then you can't complain about the outcome. It's statistically proved that a higher percentage of older people vote, lower percentage of younger people vote. So they'll go for the older votes um, with their policies. If more younger people vote, they'll go for the younger vote. Are you two going to vote in this year's general election? No, we're 11. Any excuse. Why do you think it's important to be interested in politics? Get to make a choice about what your country's going to be like. If you want to make a change and you want what you want to happen, then you have to vote. I'm back in Reading and the long wait is finally over. Today is election day. Now this is a polling station. It might look like an ordinary public library, but for today, it's been transformed into a palace of democracy. Almost anywhere can be a polling station. OK, not that last one, but the point is, on the inside, they all do the same thing. This is where people come to cast their vote. So how does it actually work? With just a few exceptions, all you need to be able to vote is... Number one, you need to have celebrated your 18th birthday. Number two, you need to have registered to vote, which you can do any time after you're 16. Once you've registered, you'll know when an election is coming up because there'll be nothing on the telly except election specials. You'll also be able to tell because a few weeks before the election, a polling card will come through your letterbox. <coughs> the polling card tells you where your local polling station is. This is where you go to on election day. Or, if you think you're going to be on holiday when the election comes, you can send in your vote by post. To vote at your polling station, all you have to do is turn up. You go inside, give your name and address to a member of staff, or, if you're not the chatty type, just hand them your poll card. They check your details against the voting register and then give you your ballot paper. The ballot paper is important because it has the names of all the candidates in your constituency and the party they belong to. So there's no need to write it on your hand the night before. Ah. The 
polling stations have been open from 7 o'clock this morning and won't close till 10 o'clock at night to give everyone a chance to cast their vote. It's now midnight. All the polling stations closed two hours ago and every ballot box from every polling station in the constituency has been brought here to the gym. Now, the furthest I'm allowed to go is just behind this metal fence because I'm not one of the official counting people. But the official counting people over there are doing what this all came down to. All the weeks of campaigning and issues comes down basically to people doing this. One vote, two votes, three votes, four votes, five votes, all night long. The atmosphere is really starting to get a little bit excited and tense around here now. I think that means there's going to be a result coming any minute now. Sharma, Alok Kumar, the Conservative Party candidate, 20,523. The results are in. The new MP for Reading West is the Conservative Party candidate, Mr Alok Sharma. Just like Mr Sharma winning here, the same thing is happening all over the country. Votes are being counted, results are being declared, 29,461. And the winners and losers are making their speeches. Thank you so much for putting the politics of hope above the politics of fear. They have placed incredible trust in me. The count will take all night, and we won't know which party has won until tomorrow. Everyone's going home now, and I'm going to go home too. I haven't had sleep in 32 hours. It's the morning after the general election, and normally, by now, we'd know which party was going to form the next government and who the next Prime Minister was going to be. But we don't. Not a clue. Your guess is as good as mine. And why? Let me explain. Of the three main parties, the Conservatives, led by David Cameron, have won the most seats, with 306. The Labour Party came second, with 258 seats. And the Liberal Democrats came third, with 57 seats. A parliament where no one party has a clear majority is known as a hung parliament. In some countries, they call this a balanced parliament. But we haven't had a hung parliament in this country since before I was born. So everyone's getting very excited about it, especially the media. And right now, no one knows how this is going to end. David Cameron is going to be the new Prime Minister, and he's going to live here. And Nick Clegg is going to be the Deputy Prime Minister, and he's going to live at home. This general election, more than 16 million people out there somewhere had the chance to vote and didn't bother. In one constituency, the MP won by just 42 votes. So think what a difference those 16 million voters might have made to the results. So, when the time comes for you to vote, just think about the difference you could make. Right, I think that's pretty much everything I could possibly tell you about voting. My work here is done. I'm going home. It's over there. <laughs>